Welcome to Wise Up On Air. How's everyone doing? We're going to have a hands-on today with Strata. Going to be bringing Chase Steele onto the show. Uh, my name is Damian Kaspauer, Audio Product Manager here at Audio Kinetic. And we're going to talk cannons and interactable objects. Uh, this is part of an ongoing series that we have started where we take new collections of the Strata multi-track library and go deep, deep, deep into them with Chase Steele, who's been heading things up. A quick look at what we're going to talk about today. We'll get this introduction out of the way. We're going to go hands-on with Strata across the Reaper project, Wise and Unreal. And then we'll round up at the end with how you can get your hands on the free strata samples and point out a couple other live streams we've done in the series. So with that, I want to welcome to Wise Up On Air Hands On, Chase Steele. Chase, welcome. Hello. How are you doing today? Ah, so good. It feels like a good day to shoot some cannons. Hey, to push some buttons. Yeah, and uh, I think I have a nice little demo here that will be able to give you a good idea of how you can make cannon sound with the uh, the new cans collection, and uh, you know also using some buttons and some uh, some other interface objects from interactable objects. So uh, there's not as much to say about those because they're you know. The button is pretty self-explanatory a lot of times, but um, there's still some things that I can show you. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I know you've done some uh, rigging behind the scenes to get these all set up in a Unreal project using Wise. So let's just jump in. Where do you want to start? Uh, well, let's see. Um, maybe I can just... I'll try to build up the excitement. All right, so cool. maybe I uh, maybe I start with just showing you um, some of the button and interface sounds, and maybe we can take a look at the um, interactable objects uh, Reaper project, and we can kind of go into the cannons, take a look at each of the different sort of components of the sound, and then um, you can see it. You should be able to see on my on my screen in Unreal right now. I have a bunch of these uh, crudely, crudely fashioned boats with cannons on them. So I'll uh, kind of show you what the this little battle scene sort of sounds like. Awesome. That's going to be great. And now the the new collection comes in just a single Reaper project. Is that right? Uh, cannons has um, it has multiple projects. So it has a project for each cannon. Um, and then it also has projects for some of the additional sounds like the fuses and then the flyby sounds. But Interactable Objects is just one project with um, a collection of buttons, levers, um, other sorts of like ge there's, there's, there's some gears. Uh, uh, but, you know, it, a lot of the things that you would kind of really sort of expect to be in there. Uh, different size variations. So there's you know, small, medium, and large, uh, plastic, metal, synthetic, or sort of synthy UI type sounds are kind of in there a little bit. But it's not, I wouldn't really call it so much an interface library. It's more, uh, it's, there's a lot of like uh, real props and buttons. So it's not overly synthy or anything like that. Right, and again, back to the, the benefit of the Strata multi-track library, those different um, buttons and interactables are all broken out into layers that you have access to. You've got all of the effects that have been used to design the elements inside of Reaper, uh, along with any automations. And um, yeah, it's kind of all right there for you to, to create the, the best sound from what's in the box yeah definitely cool well i can't wait to hear some of that um where do you want to start do you want to jump in to some of the props that you've set up or should we hear some stuff over in the reaper project um yeah maybe uh let me jump into reaper real quick 
Great. Just so I can kind of show you what I'll, I'm going to start with the um, this little interface terminal that I built in Unreal, but we can kind of just take a look at the interactable objects project since I don't have as much in inside of the uh, Unreal demo that I can you know sort of demonstrate. And I think it's there's a lot more that I can show in here. There's especially a few things that are I think really cool that I just ultimately didn't have time to find a use for. But um, so this is the main project window. So you seeing that okay? Yeah, it's looking great. All right, perfect. Uh, so typically, you know, with uh, Strata collections, there's going to be the main project window. This one, being that it only has one uh, one sub project or one uh, you know type associated with it, this is what you'll see when you open. So we have uh, the rendered composites from within the project. So you could, you know, if you're trying to audition things, you can. That's always there to be able to do that quickly. But if I click in here. This is going to bring me into the actual um, project window for the for these set of assets. So it's a little confusing because there is only one. So, but typically, like canons, here's all the sub projects you would have there. I know some maybe there's some people on here who haven't really seen Strata projects yet, so I'm just making sure I talk about that a little bit. Um, but inside, so here's interactable objects. And like I was mentioning, we have there's different switches, different buttons and levers. So this with the um, region manager over here, we can sort of find different things, easy way to navigate the project. Um, one thing that's kind of cool is they also have um, some appliance sounds. So they're ge they're generic enough that if you wanted to use them for other things, you probably could. But I guess let's. Uh, go ahead and have a listen to a few things. So here's the uh, switch, like the metal switch sounds. Let me zoom in. So again, on, and then there's some off variations. So slight, slightly different, right? Right. So metal, plastic, same sort of thing. Right? Totally. And, uh, if I go down here, you can see some of them will have small, medium, and large. I think most of these are just either small or medium. It varies a little bit depending on what it is. Uh, gears. So this this one is kind of cool. There's uh, gears, small, medium, and large. And there's gears for metal and wood. Uh, I really like the wood gears. I was trying to figure out something that I could do with them. I just didn't quite get to it. But this isn't something I... Uh, I I don't think I've seen anything really like this in any of the other projects before, so it's kind of nice. So yeah, I'll play let, those real quick. Let's hear a little bit of that, yeah. Yeah. So here's the Gears Wood Small. And the Medium. And the Large. So pretty good distinction between the different sizes. Uh, they all feel sort of, you know, useful in their own sort of way. You can uh, sort of hear that uh, just by listening to them quickly. Right. Um, and then the metal gears. The large. Uh, medium. And small. So um, <clears throat> ultimately, I think like the the use case or like what sort of niche this project or uh, this collection sort of fills is when you need uh, you need interface sounds or you need uh, interaction sounds that don't need to be necessarily anything fancy. You just need something that's going to fit that in your project. Um, this is like, it's not overly bloated. So it, when you open this up, you can kind of, easily find things that will cover a wide variety of use cases, which uh, you'll kind of see <clears throat> in my uh, Unreal example, the one terminal that I built, just using some of these sounds. Um, any any questions or anything? I mean, 
folks out there who are following along, uh, drop any questions <clears throat> into the chat. We'll keep an eye on that. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, you know, what you're saying is, you know, there's just a ton of iconic representations in there across all these different material types and interaction types uh, that I think even in these few examples that you've played, just like nail the sound of of what they are um, very literally, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's nice. Noth nothing is really overly stylistic, so it's it's all like you can find a place for it. It can it can be helpful regardless of what sort of genre or anything like that you might be working on. Yeah, and I think a lot of times uh, when you're digging around for sounds in a library, you want to start with something that's really clean, uh, precise, and complementary to whatever you're trying to match it with. Uh, you can always mess it up with effects, make it crazy, or dial it in. Um, but having this kind of collection that really focuses on representation uh, of these objects and uh, interactions, well, yeah, that, that seems like it's an easy reach when you have something that needs it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and as I've been kind of playing through some of these, obviously we see there's, um, there's some different layers. A lot of these uh, assets don't have multiple layers. So I just figured maybe I could point out a few that I do. Um, the, yeah, the lever. lever. Cool. OK, I was already there. Um, so these lever pull sounds, these do have multiple layers. So if there are going to be uh, layers involved in this project, there's a, a details layer for like squeaky or sort of synthetic type of sounds, uh, a metal layer, and then also a weight layer. So here's the, um, this these levers are pretty cool too. Uh, and the flexibility with these additional layers kind of makes them uh, cover multiple uses or um, instances where you might want some metal groaning sounds and where you may not, you can very easily mute it. Here's the whole thing. And there's medium and then large as well. So there's a large one. So this sort of squeakiness in there, that's probably something you would either want or not want. So it's very easily you can do it. And then it becomes a much more cleaner type of sound. Uh, also the terminal so this one is a little bit more synthetic sort of sounding. So this has a couple layers with it as well. And the deactivate has this synthetic layer. So again, I actually have a terminal in the project, which I use some of these for in it. You know, again, without, uh, trying very hard it matches up with the um the the project or the asset that i have in the project really well yeah so. and back to that big lever you know you've got all these different tracks for See it something here My can actually... i don't know if i'm hearing you anymore hang on let me turn you back on cool cool there yeah i got you back uh, so, so I, that, to... <laughs> I think that big lever was so compelling you know it sounds big right but it, could you right. mute a few of the layers to actually get uh, a different tonality out of it? Sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's just you know let's start with uh, we'll just keep everything muted except for the first one. Great. And then we'll see what happens. So here's just the basic layer. Great. Which is like a it's like the initial transient of the the pool. So it's kind of like maybe the start of an animation there. Great. And then. Here's the squeak, right? Which you right. easily may or may not want. And then metal, let's see what this is. All right, so it's sort of the end of the, uh, you know, gun pulling lever, it cl clinks off. So maybe depending on how much you want to emphasize that, uh, you know, you can change the volume level of it or, right. you know, that sort of thing. And then let's go put the, 
the weight layer in here as well. So that's where that real sort of cranking type of sound is. Oh yeah. Uh, lost you again. Yeah. That's uh I don't know why it's doing that, but as long as I flip back over and unmute it again. We're working with the technology <laughs> here. It's uh it's beautiful. So uh, I I love I love the options that you have there because again, you know, from this uh one asset, you know, that's that's provided as part of the rendered part of the library, you can really pick it apart. Like, oh, my lever just doesn't squeak. So let me take that out, re-render it, and now I have uh, the perfect interaction sound for my game. Or the ratcheting sound of it doesn't match the, uh, the model that I have in game. So, okay, I can take that out or maybe swap it with a different one that actually does represent whatever it is you're creating. Yeah, absolutely. So it's pretty cool stuff. Nice. Um, I guess we can get back over to Unreal here. And I'll just sort of, if I feel like I haven't heard you in a, in a few <laughs> minutes, I'll just temp, I'll periodically double check that. That sounds but, great. But um, I, yeah, I think I'm getting the hang of predicting its behavior a little bit. Awesome. Um, Thanks for bearing with the technology and uh, Unreal. It's looking great. Yeah. So let's see here. I have, so here's the, the terminal. It's actually in the level right here. Um, let me see if, I, let me grab the animation because I'm using uh, notifies on the animation to trigger these uh, different sounds. Uh, great. It's, again, just great to see behind the scenes on the process of something like this abstracted from a larger game so that we can understand the process that you go through to align the sounds from a, a library like Strata and the interactables, uh, and marry that to these uh, models and animations in Unreal. Yeah, Let me see. I'm trying to figure out where this animation got to. It's obviously still in there. We uh, go over here up in the blueprint. Ah, knobs and noodles, knobs and noodles. Yeah. Uh, this, these are some of the ways these uh, these buttons are set up. Or <laughs> you wouldn't think uh, to be as com complex as it is, but to get it to do some of the things, it was actually a lot more noodling around than what I expected. Uh, oh, that's why it's named control panel. Find it. Naming standards, folks. It's real. Have them. Use them. Love them. Yeah. There we go. So, and yeah, it doesn't help, you know, I'm also using you know, assets from many different people. So everybody's standards are a little bit different. Oh yeah. Uh, so, uh, so this is the, the animation for the terminal, which, um, you know, it's used in the project as well, but so we can see, um, now I, you could, uh, if you wanted to, you know, design a sound that just with one event in mind, I'm sure you, you could do that, but, um, just having all the different events. So I have, uh, some different things set up for the different button types. So I have a, the lever, I have a metal button, plastic button, synthetic button, and then the terminal sound itself, which cool. we looked at in the, uh, in the Reaper project. So, um, so it's kind of, I have this set up in a modular sort of way. So whatever sort of button or lever or interaction that i have in the in the uh the game i can just assign these events and match them up with whatever i need to so um so i have a few different things occurring in here so there's the terminal sound that plays at the beginning which maybe i can uh maybe i can just solo that
Yeah, and for me, breaking it up into these tiny pieces serves a couple different purposes. Uh, the first is reuse. So you can just reuse sure. tiny pieces of this across different aspects of the different props. Um, and then also when it comes to animations, um, you know, you never know at what speed these will play back at or at what point uh, someone comes in to make a change to it. So having it broken out into these tiny pieces means that as the animation changes, these important moments during the animation uh, that you're punctuating with sound are preserved. Yeah, definitely. So I have uh, all solo like each component of this. So the terminal is this first event, which, you know, if you wanted uh, let me turn the looping off. Like that could be, if you wanted that to be the whole thing, you could, Sure. but because I had all the other buttons sort of, when I, once I got in here, I was like, let's, you know, like you're saying, punctuate some of these different actions. And whether or not I keep that at the end of the day, who knows? But it, you know, it was something that took me just a few minutes and uh, I added some characters. So here, what's this one? This one is the synthetic button. Uh, the synthetic button I have in here occurring twice. So I'll solo that one. Right, so as the arm moves and sort of locks into place, it's a button sound occurring for that. And then I think there's a there's a plastic one in here as well. So right at the beginning, when the screen kind of clicks down. Yeah. And then metal. Is there a metal one? I'm pretty sure there is. Yeah, so for the keyboard popping into place, I have a metal button. Great. And, you know, putting the whole thing together. I can get this too. Come on. Right? So, you know, all with the those basic sort of interaction buttons. I used kind of one of every type, so they're all sort of represented there a little bit. And that's the terminal sound great um now there is there's a reverse animation also uh -huh. which you could you know do something a little bit different with you could put the deactivate terminal sound and keep everything else pretty much the same and then um you know uh even more flexibility yeah and can you focus on the wise project again for a second because i want to yeah. kind of yeah. unpack like so you're connected to your unreal project uh, with Wise, Wise and Unreal are connected. They're talking to each other. And you've got the Soundcaster up here with the different events. Uh, and you were using the Soundcaster to solo the different pieces so that right. as you're playing that animation, auditioning it over in Unreal, um, the Soundcaster is in control of what you hear. Yeah. In fact, let me, I'm going to drag the buttons like the whole thing down here so that when we go in we won't hear the cannons right away <laughs> cool so i'm gonna build up to the cannons right <laughs> right uh okay so having said that let's come in here we can just i'll show you some of the other oh well, that's not good <laughs> <laughs> but this is game development <laughs> there we when go when you spawn in and there's no floor uh, it's yeah. all part of the process. Yeah. So here's the terminal. So it's going to be the same thing again, but actually using it. Yep. Now, this does do something. It turns the cannons on, right? So okay. we're not hearing those yet, but <laughs> we'll hear them eventually. Yeah, that's going to be great. Yeah. So back off. And... Let's see, what else do we have? So I have, here's different cannons. Now, um, the cannon assets that I actually have inside this project, 
they do sort of loosely match the type of cannon that's provided in the uh, the, the uh, cannons collection. Mm -hmm. It's not exact, but what you're seeing me uh, pl play each of these and the sound you hear, it should kind of visually line up in in some relative way with uh, with what the actual source recordings are. Um, so these each have a little button. Nothing. This was really not much special, but I did use because this switch has uh, two different buttons on it, I figured, well, we could use plastic and a metal just to you know, give it some flavor. So this will ignite whichever cannon it's nearby. All right. And it does have two animations. So on and off, it's one click with a synthetic versus just one metal click. All right. Right. So, you know, it's about ex as exciting as we can... It's exciting of the discussions we can have on buttons, but there you have it. <laughs> um, this the one's going to be the thing same thing. If we thing. were talking about pushing people's buttons, but these are just sure. <laughs> these are just machines in a virtual world, thankfully. Yeah. Cool. So let's see. Anything else? I'm probably going to move towards talking more about the cannons now. Is there anything else I should talk about with interactable objects? You think? Well, maybe the last thing that I would touch on is just how those interactions can sometimes be dynamic. Like in the example that you have, we have this idea of a uh, machine. Sorry about that. That's I just okay. lost you for like a split second. In this example, you know, you've got a animation that always plays back at the same speed, uh, you know, with the same action and and um yeah you've added some variations in there to to make sure that it uh changes up i think that that the turning on sound uh has a couple variations yeah yeah they all all the all of the buttons have you know three to four variations for each yeah, so what's great about that is each time that animation loops plays, you know, it exponentially reaches out and grabs a new variation of those five sounds that you've added to the animation timeline. Uh, that's beautiful. And if the animator came along at some point and said, you know what, that animation happens too fast. We're going to slow it down and make that animation take twice as long, well, you'd still have a granular, uh, e you know, sound event tag at each of those five places. So it would still line up with the actions you had tagged it. Yeah. Um, and one of the things I, I, you know, played around with a little bit, I don't, I don't think I have any, I don't think I have any of the examples in this, in this, project particular but different button sizes uh switching over to because there's small medium and large so depending on the actual scale of the button you know you can uh have it switch over to those um that sort of thing as well cool uh great i know i lost you all right <laughs> i don't know what like i'm trying to figure out the like what's making it decide to yeah. do that but it's like every once in a while. It's the kind of fun we like to have here on a Wednesday afternoon. Great. Well, let's jump into cannons. Sure. Let's uh, let's take a look here. So maybe again, I'll just start off in the uh, the Reaper project, just you know, so it's consistent. Build up the excitement a little bit. Oh yeah. Um, so here's the main project window for cannons. Uh, and there's uh, there's a variety of different cannons. Let me see. Uh, this isn't this is all alphabetical. The project sorting. So to go through, there's a uh, bombard cannon, and a, a lot of this might not. It, doesn't, it certainly doesn't mean too much to me. I'm not a cannon expert, but there's a bombard. There's a carronade. There's a culverin, uh, a demi cannon, falconet, and then there's also a mortar and a naval long gun, and I don't think I'm missing any. There, uh, the 16 pounder is the first one up there. So you have all these different cannons, um, and 
just maybe to get a sense of what's associated with the actual Canon projects. The Canon projects are mostly just going to be the uh, actual shot sound, right? So here we're in the 16 pounder project and here's one of the shots. Okay. I still have you good. I just made yeah, sure. still here. Okay, perfect. Uh, so yeah, there's multiple variations. So you have six variations for each of the shots. And also this one, not all projects are going to be set up this way, but a lot of the weapons ones are, for example. Um, so we have composite regions. And then you also have regions for the body, transient, punch, and tail layers. So you could... I didn't uh, I didn't do this in my project, but you could basically have random containers for each of those layers. Uh, you could set them up very easily uh, through we through Rio wise to do to uh, to behave that way inside of your uh, project. So let's see what kind of layers we have here. We have your main body. Right, so it's going to be you know the main impressive. component of the sound. Yeah, and then your transient, like so, I guess more of an emphasis on the impact. Right, so very short staccato type sound. Yeah, the punch. This should be where a lot of the low end is. Okay, and then your tail, which again is something that depending on uh, the environment this is going to play back in, or you know your use case, you could very easily come in and shorten these tails or play around with the tail a little bit but here's the tail on its own they're pretty long the tails right in most of these great uh, as you expect for like a you know large cannon i guess yeah and then everything together all right and also sometimes you'll see these uh these additional layers in this case, the additional, it looks like it's the uh, the raw recordings, like the actual, uh, the raw like source recordings from the, from the session recording these cannons. So if you want to and have these and uh, try to process it all on your own, then it's kind of nice they're there um, inside the, inside the project. So you don't have to go digging around for them if you don't, uh, if you don't feel like Doing yeah. it like that. Let's hear what those sound so, like um, as as compared to the designed and uh, you know separated elements. Yeah, yeah. Let's check them out, and they'll be muted by default, obviously, as well. So you don't probably want. I don't think they actually match up, or maybe they do. Mm. They might match up with the rest of the sound, but let's let's listen to it individually. Uh, what's going on here? Weird. Yeah, I didn't hear anything. Sure. Oh, maybe, hang on. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not routed where it needs to go. Oh, I see. It's just the uh, something as simple, the volume there. <laughs> it's not rounded to you and i love i love it when things don't go the way you expect because the troubleshooting that a person uh goes through in order to solve it is sometimes there we go more fascinating so what was the the resolution there uh, it was actually pretty simple. It was just the volume was actually down, but I had already muted my uh, composite. So gotcha. turned it back up and I wasn't hearing it until I remembered to do that. Sometimes um, I know in some of the ambience uh, collections, um, some of the other composite tracks, some of the additional tracks, they're not all routed because you might have different uh, formats. So I didn't know if it was maybe one of those situations. Sure, sure. But. Anyway, here's the raw recordings. And these are just, you know, broken down my mic, obviously. So 
not really so I zoom in here and see what it says or tf 3d low this one I probably have to go look in the metadata to see what all is the placement and what all but that information is usually there which is really nice yeah, but that's so, quite a, a ways to go from the source recording to those layers that are broken out, um, you know, organized, yeah. and I'm guessing equalized and effects have been applied to each of those layers in order to accentuate the different uh, aspects. Yeah, yeah, definitely in some cases there's, I mean, Obviously, with uh, Strata, uh, you have in the Enrage plugin included. So a lot of times that's used to sort of do some processing. So and, you, the cool thing that's, is... You can, that's a whole multi-effect plugin. Like it's got compressors yeah. and EQs and distortions and just a, a whole host of effects that are part of Enrage. Right. Yeah. Right? Like here's one they have a distortion effect on the body. Um, so some of these, each layer might have uh, might have its own on there. But the cool thing is you can actually see because you have the the mics the way that they're named down here. Yeah, you can actually look at the um, the media items for on on the actual design layers, and you can match those up with what mic is on there. And if you want to spend some time learning about just how to process raw recordings of, uh, like a, in this case, a Canon, then you can see all, all the work that was there to get to that point, and there's no mystery behind it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, in, the, in some cases like this, you get that extra bit of opportunity to do some learning with Strata, which is very nice. That's fantastic. So there's no mystery because it's all right there, but there's still magic because arriving at those is a you know creative art of sound design but it's all exposed there in the strata multi-track project yeah definitely all right cool. let's get let's get into uh some of these other projects and just look at some of the like outside of the actual firing sounds what else is there essentially yeah uh so there's impact sounds which for the cannonball impacting on different surfaces, you know, we're just coming off the tail of having uh, the physics collection released. So now if you didn't have enough uh, physics impacts, now you got even more for a specif specified purpose um, being the cannon impacts. So there's large, medium, and small. So I tend to just, and I'm demonstrating this, go with the medium because it gives you a pretty equal sense of the, you know, what what lies on either end um so inside here it's you have a lot more tracks um so this is organized kind of a little differently than some projects we've looked at but you have composites for each of the material types so if i zoom out a little bit you can see all the variations for concrete and then it goes to rock and then dirt metal wood water, sand, and then sails. So um, the sand and sails, these are pretty unique, uh, especially the sails. So if you actually have cloth material, uh, you can make an impact sound on that That for the cannonball that will sound uh, like it makes sense. No so actual boats were sunk in the creation of this library. Can we claim that? Uh, I mean, I can't claim that, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that probably not. You know, I don't know how cost effective that would be. <laughs> Accurate, uh, maybe, but expensive. It sounds good, and it sounds good enough, though. It sounds <laughs> like it. You believe that there would be. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so here's here's the sales impact. Just it's worth listening to, since you know we kind of can. Uh, it. We, we've gone through a lot of these other material types pretty recently, but so there's your sail impact. And maybe it's worth breaking down these layers here. Maybe if I can zoom in a little bit more. All 
All right, so the main looks like, and again, this is a nice thing. You can always, might be hard to see over the stream, but I can look at that and see it was a duffel bag. That's what's used for this cloth sound. And there's your weight layer. And then a leather jacket for the Ooh. debris layer here. Uh, the cinematic layer, this is uh, usually, let's see what's on here to process this. Some comp compression and some multiband compression inside of uh, Enrage. So let's see how much of an effect that's having if I unmute it and turn it up. So it's sort of adding a little bit of... Uh, Sort of thickens it a little bit. Yeah, there's a sustained kind of punch to it. Yeah. So mute that. But then once again, all together, there's that. Quickly listening to a few of the others. Impact rock. I just want to say those sail impacts would make terrific dragon wing flaps as well. Yeah, for sure. It's a nice, it's a very nice sort of neutral type of uh, cloth sound for something large like that. Yeah. Uh, what did I mess up? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So that. So rock. Nice. And what else is worth checking out? Uh, sand, maybe. Interestingly, I don't actually see. I don't know. Hang on. Sorry about that. Sand. So there's this is a barbell impact. Um, there's a lot of things in here that actually aren't cannonballs, funny enough, right? But very convincing for cannonball impact sounds. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so those, again, all the impacts... You have large, medium, small. So you got three projects for all those. And they're all going to be laid out the same way that I just sort of showed. Great. And the last thing before we can put it all together in the project would be to talk about the additionals, right? So, like, what about, like, fuse sounds? What about, you know, after the cannon fires, the sound of it, you know, pushing back? Uh, those sort of things. Those are all going to be inside the additionals. And again, you have large, medium, and small for these also. Right. So, um, and there's also, okay, so in here we have the pushback sounds, which at first I wasn't, um, again, not, not really having cannons uh, front of mind. I was like, <laughs> what's the push? I was like, what is the pushback sound? And then once I, um, you know, looked at my animations, I was like, oh, it's, you know, obviously it's for after it fires, it's the, re like the recoils sort of cool so yeah. you have wood and metal so here's that all right and it'll in context it really kind of comes together so here's metal and then we have a series of fuse sounds all right that's great so these these are broken down too, so you have some control over, you know, the initial ignition, right? And the sparkle, which is also part of the beginning and the end. So those are potentially things if you wanted to break those into, you know, separate events. Like maybe you, you're lighting the cannon and you have the po possibility of having a dud, right? Um, sure. Things you could play with like that. And then the fuse all on its own there. Yeah, and you can loop those in order to extend the duration if you need to. So again, depending on how long it's going to happen, you can always uh, create an event that will stop the loop at some point and play that uh, ending sound that we see there. Yeah, now surprisingly... Um, I, I would have thought this would have been set up as a loop to be able to render it out, but it's actually, uh, it's not set up that way. 
you can definitely you know do it pretty easily yourself yep but um in this case yeah it's just a really uh it's pr it's pretty long but um i'm sure you could uh it's it's all there if you wanted to, to yeah. do that and build it um then the last thing that's in here are the flyby sounds okay so the flyby sounds is if you imagine you know your player or your character inside of unreal or wherever um the cannonball is flying over top of your head uh, obviously you should you know there should be some sort of sound associated with that so let's see what that sounds like <laughs> Right, and cool. I wonder what the source actually is for this. Let me see. Be interesting. Is it jet planes? Is it I mean that's my, that's what I was thinking it would <laughs> maybe be. Synth. If there's a synth. Ooh. Uh, what? So I guess we can break down the layers. So those, I guess, are both uh, synthesized. Okay. As far as what that says in the file name. And I'm not sure what that it says, you know, cannonball pass by noise large is the source. So not sh entirely sure the, what the recording process might have been for that. <laughs> but altogether, <laughs> and there you go. Great. Um, now, the, these actually worked out uh, a lot better than I I'll only say. I anticipated having to toy with them a little bit more to make them convincing, but it actually it seemed to work very uh, very easily once I got them into the uh, Wise project and uh, set up the uh, the event for it. So we get to hear that in action. Cool. Let's uh, let's do that. Yeah. Jump back in. Play. Okay. So maybe I start off. Here's two different cannons. So this one actually is, I'll have to remember, I'll go into Wise and solo it. Looking good. Probably should unsolo that. I think it's the, uh, hang on. I think it's this one. Let's see, I'll drag it in. All right. No, nope, I guess the wrong one. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm not a canon expert, but. But you're doing a great job. How about this? Wow. That's some slow-mo destruction over there. That one. I guess I could see if I look at the uh, Falcon Net, maybe that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, we only have two different cannons, so we're not, uh, you know, we're not going to be guessing the whole time here. There we go. So that's the Falcon Net, and that is loosely kind of what they actually look like. When cool. I did my research, I mean, I did one Google image search, so whatever the top results were, I believed it. So, <laughs> um, but it seems seemed to be correct. Yeah. Uh, and then this other one over here, maybe this the demi. Let's try that out. Will we be right? Wow. And it bounced. I'm doing great at guessing here. <laughs> there we go. But there's your demi cannon there. And I know the ones on the ships over there, these are mo the mortars. Or that's the closest thing I could get to a mortar anyway. Right. So um, now that was just the firing sound, okay? So we could go back in and we could hear the whole thing. So cannon firing I think I have that in here already yes so cannon firing by itself and I'll add in the uh, let's add the pushback sound in all 
right? So that may be, may have to solo it on its own, but and these have a cooldown. Ooh, yeah, I hear that chunk yeah. as it shifts back. Yeah, let's let's highlight that a little bit. There you go. So it, you know, it comes together when you listen to the those pushbacks on their own inside the project. It's like, uh, I, you know, I didn't really know what to make of it, but with the whole thing put together, uh, it makes a lot of sense. And then, of course, um, I have the fuse in here as well, which it's why there's the delay time when yeah. we press the button. So if I solo, where's the I'm losing my did I put the fuse in here? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. There we go. Right? Nice. And we could, since I have the button, I can back away from it in time. We can sort of hear what it sounds like further down. Now my floor is floating away because I thought it'd be fun if the floor was was a destructible object. So, oh yeah, me, I'm just gonna reload the level real quick. <laughs> Lost my mouse. There we go. Uh, cool. So, any uh, anything you want to hear again before I put the um, the battle scene in? I mean, it's it's fantastic. Again, you've got all the pieces working together. Uh, the the fuse sound, the cannon fire, the recoil, um, and the impacts as well uh, off in the distance across different surfaces. Yes, I have some concrete over there. Um, it's, I believe, let's go in here. I set up, uh, I tried to just set up one surface impact that sounded pretty decent. So what's this? General impacts. Again in here. So it's the concrete, I believe, is what we're using. Yeah. It's because I have something soloed. It doesn't like me doing that right now. <laughs> There we go. So there's our actual impact event. Um, now let's see, I'll turn this on and then everything's gonna be going. So you hear all these cannons firing, you hear the flybys overhead, um, fuses. So it should all be, you know, fairly immersive sort of battle set up here. And I have the terminal, which is nice to turn it on and off. Survive. That's pretty good. Eventually it'll break. <laughs> pretty cool. So let's can reset it and then maybe listen to the flybys for sure. But uh, yeah, I thought the flybys, they sounded uh, a lot more believable. I hardly did anything to get them to work, and uh, I was really happy with how those sort of implemented. Yeah, they were identifiable during the uh, the battle scene there. Uh, it was great. Great with all the pieces working together and, yeah, destroying uh, the floor even at the end. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It seemed like it could be a fun thing to do so totally uh, uh i'll turn it back on and we can i'll highlight those flybys because i think that was it's pretty interesting how those sort of end up working Now 
Now, what I can do also is show you how that actually is, like how that, uh, what the functionality is there, because um, it's kind of interesting. So there's a essentially a, a trigger box that's attached to my uh, player. Let me see if I can open that up. Great. So on the character itself, you've got a trigger volume attached. Yeah, because I figured I mean, there's probably there's various ways you can do you can do this, obviously. But um, at the end of the day, the easiest thing that I was able to do was just attach a massive sphere to the top of the uh, character model. And let me turn the visibility on so you can actually see it. Should be visible there, right? Just a big cool, sphere yeah. on top. So it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, turning directions. Um, and the way it gets triggered, I can show that again quick. So there's, it's, you know, obviously not something we're looking at inside the game, right. but it's there. It's there in spirit, right? <laughs> um, and then the event has this triggering. The, it's on a component begin overlap. So as soon as the cannon projectile overlaps with it, it's going to play that flyby sound. Um, and there's also a little bit of tu fine tuning going on with how it, uh, how we perceive it inside of Wise. So I can maybe if I can get it back in here and. Let me make this invisible again. We don't want to see it. And then I'll solo it and show you inside of Wise. Okay. Right. Flybys. And the audio in here. So just have some uh, some attenuation and um, low pass filter depending on the distance. Of course, yeah. that's more or less. Uh, you know, I, I I could spend more. You could probably this is where you would spend the most time getting it to sound more realistic. I bet, but um, that's kind of what's going on. With that. Awesome. Yeah, that's. Simple implementation. Let me turn this down. Did I not turn everything off? Close it. Yeah, so um, <laughs> I thought oh, I had muted everything, but. It's a great implementation of, you know, dynamically triggering the pass by sounds for it, and, you know, a common technique to then have that trigger volume around uh, the player character so that yeah in a whiz by situation you can play those positionally uh depending on where they uh, are coming from if you can see them and of course if you can't then you can use random positioning in wise to just spawn those uh in whatever direction uh you want them to to be heard yeah yeah absolutely cool Let's see. I can go back in and maybe we can listen to the flybys. We'll just quickly listen to the battle sequence with uh, the other layers, like the firing and the impact, so we can see how it's all built up. Let me mute that. All right, so firing. Let's maybe just do that. Oh, I see. I didn't realize I had to fly back inside firing mixer. And back to pool. 
uh, the beauty of inheritance and digging for the right level of the hierarchy to solo. Yes. Bombard, that's probably it. Yeah, okay. Right, so there's all the, uh, you know, little boats, the firing sounds on them, multiple distances. Great. Oh, it's too late. Can the I escape? Floor. <laughs> no, I think that's it. I have to restart it. Uh, okay, now I've got that sorted out. Let's see what else we can listen to. So the boats firing. So they, I made sure that you can hear cannons pretty much from any distance in this map sure. to some certain degree, um, just to kind of help help the scale of the battle seem make it makes sense. Yeah. And so keep that soloed, and then bring in the pushbacks. So you can definitely hear those come in. I think I use the metal pushback on these too. Sounds clean. Yeah. Now the fuses, actually for me, was the thing I was probably was the least satisfied in totality when I was tweaking it. So you can kind of hear them all in some way, but I wasn't really decided how much actually should be in there. Uh, but anyway, there they all are. And if I put the flybys back in, then that kind of completes the picture. Great. Bring it close, you can really. Yep. So, pretty. I think it came out pretty believable, all things considered. Uh, so, had a lot more fun with the cannons collection than I honestly was anticipating. It's really, um, there's a lot of really useful sounds in there that they go really well into uh, your project with having to mess around too much to get it uh, to get it to work. So, yeah, it's a fantastic illustration of both the cannons and the interactables strata multi-track projects. Uh, what a great little demo scene again you put a lot of detail into there the animations for uh for turning the whole system on you've got those destructible environmental elements throughout a uh, little bit of the you know cloth uh or sail impacts and other surface impacts uh, along with all of the mechanisms for those cannons it's a it's a great little demo of what you can do with that collection yeah it. it was uh it was a lot of fun trying to put it together so cool cool uh well thanks for that folks out there who are still with us this is it jump in and grab strata uh go to audiokinetic.com and hit the products strata tab and uh, you can get started with our sample collection. We have a free Strata Sample 1, uh, historical firearms, some UI, some vehicles, uh, great stuff. Uh, we also have a Strata Sample 2 that just recently came out. So again, a little bit of footsteps, um, some sci-fi elements, you know, just a ton of things to get you started with you know imagining the multi-track workflow uh with strata at the core of your interactive audio process so you can jump in log in and sign up um follow the instructions uh as part of the checkout process and install and open the audio kinetic launcher to get those downloaded uh, and then stay up to date because we've got collections coming out every month uh, and we will continue to release incredible content uh, in this multi-track format uh, so definitely follow along uh, if you enjoyed what uh, 
we went through today, uh, you can jump back into the hands-on that we did with the physics collection that came out last month. Uh, nice, nice work on that one as well, Chase. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. I, actually, this I still have some of the relics of that in here. So, uh, <laughs> so they between the physics and uh, this the interactable objects, especially between those two things, you can essentially do a pretty good job of building out the, you know, the player's experience with the world itself. Uh, it's pretty, pretty nice combo. Nice. Nice. Uh, and dig all the way back to the live stream that we did talking with some of the folks at Boom Library about how, to, how they recorded and produced that physics collection. Uh, again, deep dive into some microphone techniques, uh, the different materials that they covered. Uh, we just went deep on how that whole collection came together. And it's a great perspective for folks out there looking to get a, a better understanding of what goes into creating one of these Strata multi-track collections. So uh, dig back into that. But today, Chase, thanks so much for bringing all your experience and the hard work you put into showcasing this these collections. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do it. And, um, you know, appreciate the opportunity to come on here and talk about Strata a little bit. Well, we like to uh, we like to talk about the fun things that we get up to here at Audio Kinetic. And I'm so glad uh, to be able to share the time with you and share it with folks out there who are getting started with this collection and with Strata. So thank you. In the meantime, let us know what you think. Drop a line, uh, post it in the comments here. Let us know what you want to see as part of these hands-on walkthroughs with Strata. Uh, and we'll try to work towards bringing more of what you want to these and uh, continuing to highlight the great work being done by folks uh, at Audio Kinetic and as part of our uh, partners out there creating collections for Strata. So. Thanks so much. Chase, take care. Until next time. All right. You as well. All right.